Summer months are here, and now it's time to check in with the head coach of the Liberty Flames baseball team, Jim Toman, as he prepares for the fall uh, portion of his season coming up here in just a few months. And, uh, Coach, I know you were not far removed from the conclusion of the 2016 season. Your team made a heck of a run in the Big South tournament. One run decided the thing with uh, Coastal Carolina in the championship game. But uh, overall, you had to be proud of the way your team finished. Yeah, it was a rough year. Um Lost a lot of one-run games early and never really got it going until the end. But the guys just kept persisting and grinding it out and uh, had every reason to fold halfway through. At one point, uh, I remember meeting with him and said, oh, wait, we ain't never been under 500 since I've been here at Liberty. I said, we're 20, I think we were 21 and 26 at the time. And I said, we, we can't let that happen. And they grinded it out, and I was awful proud of them down the stretch. I think we won 10 out of 11, and then... You know, played in the championship game and almost had Coastal, lost one nothing, and uh, were a couple swings away from uh, going to another regional. But uh, it's looking good now. Coastal's in the College World Series, so I think the more they win, the better it makes us look. So we're pulling for Coach Gilmore and, and, and Coastal right now. Yeah, that's certainly a remarkable run that they're on, no doubt about that. Uh, what, what really clicked for your team, though? Was it something in that Old Dominion game? Because I think you guys were trailing by two or three, four runs, something like that, around the, the midway point, and then you came back and won that game. Was that yeah. kind of the, the light switch? Well, I think that was a big relief. We finally came back and won, and we held them, and uh, that was a big win for us, and they're a good, good squad. But uh, I think we just got tired of losing to be honest with you, and uh, our pitchers started pitching a little bit better. We had pretty darn good offense all year, and our defense was okay. It wasn't great, but it, it was okay, and obviously we just didn't get it done on the mound early in the year, and I think the pitchers started pitching a little bit better, and uh, the hitters kept hitting. They, they pretty much hit all year. Um, you, know, you know, the last game, you know, Coastal threw a guy throwing about 94, 95 at us, and then they had Morrison out there late, and we didn't scratch, but... Um, for the most part, our offense did its job, and I think, I think uh, they just kept grinding it out, and I think our pitchers got a little bit better late. And you look at the offense, the majority of that offense is, is indeed coming back this next season, minus Dalton Britt. Uh, you've got to feel good about what you got in place. Yeah, pretty much everyone on the field that was in the, uh, the, the Big South tournament at the end and the last game against Coastal, um, they're all back other than Dalton. And uh, when you get... I don't remember a year where we have our top three or four hitters back. Obviously, DJ Artist was a freshman All-American, and he's getting a lot of accolades right now. He's up in the Cape Cod League, had a great freshman year. And uh, Will Shepard uh, and uh, even Josh Lotta hit over 300. Um, and Andrew Yasek was pretty consistent all year long, and, and we're getting them guys back. So... It looks good offensively. We have a ton of players coming back. Even Grabowski and Koala hit at times in spurts pretty darn good late. Um, so on paper, we have an awful lot of hitters back and position players, and we got some good ones coming in as well. Um, we scrambled late and got some uh, junior college left-handed pitchers that we're bringing in. Um, obviously, Jack DeGroat grew up there. Them last two games were very impressive. He pitched like an all-conference type pitcher. And uh, Shane Quarterly had a bunch of saves and a lot of wins, too, and was a bulldog pretty much all year. So we have the makings of a good squad coming back, so we're excited about it. How proud are you of Dalton Britt and what he contributed to this program, 239 games? Yeah, yeah. That's a tough one because we're going to miss him. I mean, it seems like uh, just yesterday we're bringing him into camp to see if we can make him an offer out of high school. He didn't have a whole lot of offers, and – the kid ended up playing about every game of his career and set the record and uh, for games played. And uh, we're going to obviously miss him now. You know, every year you guys have to pick it up and you recruit. And we knew Dalton was going to be a senior, um, so we actually signed the top two rated shortstops in the state of uh, North Carolina that'll be coming in to fight for that job. And we've got you know three or four infielders back from this squad, so. Um, we're going to miss Dalton. He, he was fun to be around and uh, played extremely hard and um, really, really happy for him that he got drafted. He's going to have a chance at professional baseball. Yeah, 31st round for him uh, overall. Uh, uh, you know, it looks like that uh, the, the, the draft, uh, you know, it, it didn't hurt you terribly bad, but, you know, there were still a couple of guys that, that went in there. Yeah, I, I was happy to see uh, really – 
I was on my knees praying for Dalton Britt to get drafted just because he's earned it, and he's earned that opportunity. So I was extremely happy for him. Um, looks like Parker Bean's going to get a chance to play professional baseball. He'll have to decide whether he signs or come back for a senior year. And we had a couple of our top recruits get drafted really high. And more than likely, you know, when you're drafted in the first round and you're going to get $2.9 million, uh, I told Alex Kirilov that I'm proud of him, praying for him, and uh, to send me a little bit of that cash. <laughs> uh, but awesome kid that wanted to come to Liberty, really strong Christian kid. He's been committed since the ninth grade. So awesome kid. He did everything the right way. And uh, then Khalil Lee got drafted in the third round. Uh, we were hoping Khalil, you know, when we signed him, he was 85, 88, okay? And a year and a half later, he's at 95, and they drafted him as a hitter because he's a real good hitter. But... He's third round, you're looking at, you know, 600000 or so. So it's very difficult for him to turn that type of money down. I'm hoping he does. But usually you don't get a first rounder and a third rounder wherever you're at. But we've got, I think, 16 other recruits coming in, and they're all locked into the Liberty Way, and they're solid kids. And we, like I said, we did scramble. We needed some left-handed pitchers. And Coach Quinn and Coach Murray got out on the road late in the season. Maybe that's why we started winning. They were on the road recruiting, okay? <laughs> And uh, ended up, we ended up signing uh, four junior college pitchers late that will help us. And, and we have DeGroat back and Quarterly back and Klaus back and, and a lot of other guys. We'll get Jackson Birch and Zach Clinton back, who we lost before the season started. Um, so on paper, it's starting to look pretty good for us. Yeah, you mentioned with Birch and, and with Clinton. I mean, how much did you yeah. miss those guys and, and just having some well, lefties in there? You know, every school in the country has injuries, and you don't make excuses about it. But, boy, Bur Birch was 90-94, and Zach Clinton had a bunch of appearances as a freshman, and he really would have been our guy to come in and get lefties out. It sounds crazy, but they can't hit his changeup. So he's a really good, you know, guy to bring in and a matchup guy and try to get out lefties. So we didn't have them two guys, and – you know, Dylan Allen went down five games into the season, and Josh Lotto, who was our first or second catcher, uh, missed a lot of games because he was banged up twice. Um, and then, obviously, uh, Victor Cole went down with, you know, 20-some games left. So it was a rough year in the, in the uh, training room, and uh, we've got a great, great training staff, and they got them back out as soon as they can. But it's just part of college baseball. You're going to have injuries, so you can't make excuses. But... Yeah, it would have been nice to see what would happen if we stayed healthy. Lastly here, what do you do now in these uh, next couple of months to get ready for fall well, ball? It's really busy. We're out recruiting, and we've had games on our field. Just had the VHSL state playoffs here. And, uh, uh, you know, it looked like LC LCA uh, was going to win. They ended up uh, losing in the championship. Rustburg local team won. So it was fun to watch them guys play on our field. And, uh we actually uh, been on the road. Coach Murray and Coach Quinn are on the road right now. I'm getting ready Friday to get on the road. Um, a lot of people think when the season's over and it's vacation time, but not, not any vacation in college baseball. You're either on the road recruiting or in the office trying to figure out, uh, you know, your roster for the fall and your schedule and scheduling. And uh, but it's a lot. It's a lot of uh, a lot of really busy right now. Actually, in the summer. All right, Coach, we'll be safe out there and uh, look forward to catching up with you again here real soon. Enjoyed it, Nick. That's the head coach of the Liberty Flames, Jim Toman. My name is Nick Pierce for the Liberty Flames Sports Network.